Hi right, guys. You ever had those moments when you go, duh, and you want to bash your head on the workbench for about two hours? Well, <laughs> this was one of those moments. And to S. Robbins, as y'all know her by her screen name, um, give me a good swift kick in the pants and got my head back straight. And now we fully understand how this power supply works. As those of you that haven't seen the other videos or didn't quite understand because there was so much uh, going on back and forth in the comments. The two rectifier units in the back are not bridge rectifiers at all. They are just dual diode packs. And as someone else mentioned in the uh, comments on the other video, RM1, RM2, rectifier module 1, rectifier module 2. The two AC inputs come in. They go into A and B from each side and positive on the other side. So it's just two diodes inside the pack that you know, or using these units, not four diodes like a standard bridge rectifier. And the bad thing about it is, I already knew this, but when I pulled this unit apart and saw the two rectifier or bridge rectifiers installed, I don't know if I had brain lock or what was going on but that threw me for a loop not knowing that whoever worked on this before installed the wrong components <clears throat> so why do I say that I already knew this well about eight years ago I had gotten this old power supply <clears throat> it's a trip light PR40A and it came in fully in intact and the guy gave it to me and I repaired it knowing exactly what the problem was and exactly how it was built at the time there was no schematic I could find on this particular model so I'll show you what I did to uh, remedy the problem back then now, as we can see inside this power supply it's built a little different than the uh, PR60 but it's the same concept and instead of one, I mean, uh, instead of using two uh, filter boards, it only has one. And we can see all three taps on the transformer. This is our blue wire, which is our ground wire that goes down to the filter board. And these are the other two taps on the transformer. And as you can see, let me turn this so you can get a better look at it. This is how I solved the problem back then. This had also had two rectifier modules in it. And I replaced them with these big stud mount diodes. And the way I did this was I cut out two small circuit boards, single sided boards. And back there in the back is a circuit board at the bottom and the back at the, in the top there's a circuit board and I built this cover right here to protect them so nothing can short out to it and you can see there's two circuit boards here with the studs run through them now what this does with having the two circuit boards you know you got copper on the outside of each one so that insulates the diode studs from the chassis so these are just floating. Now if you, you know, come across here and, sh and short of that, you blow the, the heck out of it. And that's why I built this little uh, covering put over them. But this is how I solved that problem eight years ago. And I had completely forgotten about this unit. And forgot what I went through back then to solve this problem. So the whole time I knew exactly 
what needed to be done. It's just that I had brain lock <laughs> on that PR60. And and two, Sue pointed me in the right direction. I didn't know exactly what was going on. But I don't know, just I guess you can call it getting part of getting old, you forget things. And sometimes you can't see the tree because of the forest. But yeah. Now this power supply it works real good. Um, I have it since I rebuilt this thing back eight years ago. There's been no problem. I don't run uh, ham radios off of it due to the fact that there is no crowbar circuit in this power supply. Unlike the PR60 that has a crowbar circuit. And you can see it's just a uh, use a simple voltage regulation to uh, control the output voltage if uh, you was to short the lead together it wouldn't be a pretty sight and you wouldn't want to have a ham radio hooked to this when that happens so yep I already knew what the problem was I just couldn't uh, get my head around it was having one of those days <laughs> And that happens uh, quite a bit. Um, you know, so I use the excuse of getting old, but uh, about five years ago I had a seizure and uh, come to find out I had a chemical imbalance in my brain. And it seems like there's certain parts of uh, time back there I don't remember that good, but it's all, all in good now. No problem. Medication uh, fixed that problem, but. Again, sometimes your your brain don't engage when you're trying to do stuff. You know, and you get on a lot of stress and this and that, trying to get everything done and working a lot of overtime. It will really get your mind messed up. But anyway, that was the solution, and that'll be the solution for uh, this one as well. And uh, in this one, I happened to put four diodes, which was way overkill in this unit because this is only a 40 amp and these are I think 35 amp a piece in this one so you know the question is uh, how do I want to tackle this one it's very simple and we don't really need two wires off in each tap let's say it's only a 60 amp and this will handle you know one wire will handle 30, 35 amps with no problem you don't have to have two. Same thing on the uh, input to the boards. You don't have to have two wires. So what I have here is some more stud mount diodes. These are 40 amp. And all I'm going to do is just uh, connect, you know, here and connect here. And you have your circuit. You have your rectifier. Um, the only thing is these do have to be insulated from what they're mounted on and you see there's two uh, mica washers on this and there's a plastic center sleeve on the inside so I got to figure out how I'm going to mount these in here because like I, I used the uh, circuit board solution on the uh, PR40 back then but I just want to give this a little quick test and uh, see if I can get my 24 volts out right quick. Now, what you're going to see me do, I don't suggest you to do because um, we are dealing with a lot of amperage here. And we are dealing with main voltage, so if you do so, you do so at your own risk. But all I'm going to do is take one of the bridge rectifiers and we're going to plug right into the transformer tap we'll set that down on the bench make sure that your other wires that don't have no load there's no regulator board in this so make sure all your wires are not to a point where they can touch or hit anything and short out you know you got to be very careful doing something like this and we'll take one of the other taps We'll plug it in. Alright, 
no chance of those shorting out. Since we got no load on it, there should not be a whole lot of current draw. We're just going to connect to the other end of our diode and go to our input board, our filter board number two. And we'll take our other clip lead, test on, and we'll go to our other board. This requires a 15 amp fuse. I've got a 10 amp fuse in it, just in case anything goes wrong, it'll blow quicker. power to the unit the unit is powered up there's no fireworks or smoke okay with everything connected up we'll go to the back of uh, the first filter board and we'll connect it to the ground and we'll go to the positive side and we have 24 volts. We'll do the same to filter board number two. And we have our 24 volts. So that's all it took to straighten out the rectifier unit to uh, get our 24 volts back. Okay, so I worked out a solution to uh, mount these two stud diodes um, it you know it would have been nice to have uh, been able to mount them right directly into the heat sink but that means having to go through here and cut out fins and run a wire down behind so what I've done was made these two aluminum brackets <coughs> and I mounted the diode on each one and they are insulated with two micro washers and two uh, of these little insulating rings inside to keep the stud center of the hole. Now I made the brackets longer in case I wanted to come back and add another diode to each one and then I could hook up you know the other two wires one on top, one on bottom. If I do, do that, I would do away with the ring terminals, cut a piece of circuit board to fit this, and let it clamp up on the circuit board. The top of the circuit board would be insulated, so I could solder both wires right to the uh, the circuit board. But, you know, these are 40 amps a piece. That's, that's plenty of uh, headroom there to take care of anything. Also, if I did that, I would have to move this capacitor around to the back of the board. Right now, I just got enough clearance for that capacitor to clear this aluminum bracket. So the only thing now is to uh, get the regulator board hooked up and test it out and see exactly just what we got going on on this old supply. And this morning, I had my friend in here helping me out. That shop cat sitting in the floor. She comes in here and helps me and uh, keeps things straight. If she would have been in here the other day. I may not have uh, made the mistake of uh, calling diode packs bridge rectifiers. So what do you think, Shark Cat? Yeah, that's what I thought. So I got the supply all back together and the only thing I need to do now is give it a good cleaning. I wanted to make sure I can get it to work before I spent time cleaning it up. So uh, you can see there's all the bad parts that was in it. These were the uh, spade connectors. The uh, SCR was also bad. It's completely shorted. 
the incorrect parts that was removed and all the filter board capacitors plus the uh, capacitors that was on the uh, rectifier board and that was a fuse that was laying inside of it you can see it was toasted so uh, I got all the uh, extra wires heat shrinked capped off got them tie wrapped in place and the new diodes are installed so all we got to do now is fire it up and see what we get another thing I want to mention is that I don't know why they installed this lamp here not connected so we'll turn it on and you can see the power switch has a lamp already in it so maybe someone had drilled a hole there and was going to do something and just plug it up with a lamp. I don't know. And we'll look over at the meter. And we're sitting at 13.8 volts. So the repair was a success. The power supply is now running. We just got to give it a good clean up. I'll turn it back off because... Uh, Shop cat has come over here to take a look and make sure everything was all right. And yeah, I think she's bored with it. So anyway, uh, sorry about all the confusion on the first two videos of this thing. Like I said, it just didn't grasp out to me until uh, Sue made her recommendation, got me straight on it. And we now have a another supply up and running and hopefully it'll give some uh, few years of good service anyway we'll see uh, I don't know if this is still the last video in 2016 because it's just about gone hope everybody had a great Christmas I know I sure had also my son proposed last night to his girlfriend that he's been dating for many years so we're having a new addition to the family here for long anyway take care We'll catch you later. See you now.